July we started supporting the festivals and uh, we started hearing back and uh, eventually we got an email from Tokyo. Uh, they, they, they told me about a, it's a good month ago right, that they uh, considered us for a shortlist. You, know, so short list, you, know, you guys have been shortlisted for the main competition. Uh, FYI, um, let us know if there's any developments before the Tokyo, right? So I said, well, so far nothing. Then eventually, about a week later, I got another email saying that you've been selected to be in the main competition of Tokyo. So obviously, I was just at home, actually, and, and uh, so that was great news. It's uh, my first time as a director to be in a main competition of uh, a big festival like Tokyo. So I'm really, really excited uh, to experience uh, this in October. But yeah, immediately that I, uh, after I got the email, I texted Bella, she could call, and she replied, and we really talked, and then the rest of the team and then finally I think Tokyo announced end of September so we could finally share the news and we're here now to kind of share the good news to, to all of you guys and uh, excited to, to do our world premiere in Tokyo. Yes, go ahead. Hi Direk, uh, paano po muna nagsimula yung concept ng pelikula and your collaboration with Direct Lab for the screenplay? Yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, good question, Mel. Um, as you all know, I, I produced Lab's uh, Helen. Uh, Lullaby to the Sorrowful Mystery. That is how you walk at least uh, 2015. Uh, I got to know Lau about 2013 and then uh, kind of, uh, you know, shadowed him for a bit. I just wanted to kind of see what, well, you know, why, why Lab is such a rock star, right? <laughs> or why he's such an icon, you know, on tour. Right? So, uh, we, we kind of had that kind of teacher-student uh, mentorship uh, for a couple of years. And then we were shooting Hele. Uh, of course, as we were shooting, you know, we would always uh, have nights to be creative. And I told him this concept that I heard uh, about the Manyanita. He instantly liked it. He told me, he goes, I'll help you. I'll help you. I'm going to help you. And I said, Sige, you want to write something? And he goes, Sige, say, I'll write something. Story concept mo direct. Sorry, it's, it's a story that I approached him. And then eventually we collaborated. Uh -huh. He also brought in some ideas. And then about a week later, he sent me an outline. And about a month later he wrote the, the screenplay and in between us if it's something I, I know Bella definitely knows this but without the translation the script's only about eight pages long it's about eight to nine pages long so in terms of the style of Manyanita I guess in the sense of the term it is on the art house side for me personally as a director I, I'm also, also a big fan of something called transcendental style in filmmaking and that's kind of what I studied uh, and brought into this film, where it's very quiet, uh, it's very visually driven, very musically driven. I think in the 35th minute, that's the only time you hear Bella speak. So it's very, it's really a journey, it's really an immersive, uh, a film that will allow you also to meditate, I think. Uh, and of course, uh, we hope you all enjoy that journey. So it's kind of that, for me personally as a director, I, I came from Shargao and First Love, you know, yeah. In, in the terms of the industry, mainstream films, I just really need to do something very personal, uh, very me. And uh, I'm thankful when I approached Viva that Viva actually, my collaboration with Viva was, 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 was great because they gave me creative freedom. And when I approached Bella, actually, and I don't know if Bella knows this, but Bella's the first actress that said yes to me without a script. I think I just, yeah. I just pitched this to her. We were having, I think, tea or coffee in, in one of these hotels. And then I said, Bella, I have this project. 
Monday night I stopped on what, one minute and she goes, that game I'll do it. Are you serious? I was pitching a story to you. Yeah, she was actually pitching a story to me. And then I said, wait, you know, I have something. I'm cooking something with love. And I pitched it to her and she said, did I game out of it? And, and she did it. And so, uh, you know, that awesome for, for me to receive that trust from her. And I'm thankful that we're able now to now the premiere in Tokyo. So at least, you know, I found out the trust is kind of validated. So, so that's kind of how it all started. Running time in the movie there. It's two and a half hours. So. So it's, it's, it's uh, let's put it this way, a, a very, you know, like I said, uh, studying under Lab for all those years, definitely he's got his own style. So I learned that. And then I, I also studied uh, Transcendental Style, which is actually authored by Paul Schrader, you know, the American filmmaker, first reform, taxi driver, all those films. So. And then I kind of made it my own. You know, of course, as a filmmaker, you always want to put your voice in the kind of styles that you learn. So... Hopefully, when you guys see it, hopefully when you guys see the film, you will you will see the homages, you will see the similarities, but you'll also see where I put my voice in. Like I said, when Lab wrote the script, it was about eight pages long. So that was now it was my my job as a director to translate that into a feature. So very visual, very visual, very musically driven. The the the, the, the music that you hear actually was playing here was handpicked because the music also helps tell the story. And just a very character-centered uh, film on uh, Fidel Berta, Bella's character, as she seeks for revenge. Yeah, see si Bella, naman, the um, role mo is a uh, sniper. Yes. Seeking for revenge. First time, first time I'm playing uh, this kind of character. How was the journey of that shoot? Um, again, um, it started with a pitching. I was pitching um, a concept to Derek Paul and his team. And ibang ibang pelikula. Ibang pelikula that I wanted to write, and I started writing. So his whole team was there, and then their Paul says, "Meron na kung concept, bakag gusto mong itry." And then he told me about it, and I was so interested because at that time I was doing Sino ang may sala. So actually, while we were filming this, I would be with Sino ang may sala Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But TTHS, I would be with Manyanita. Um, and it was such a good break for me because it's like soap, ang dami mong sinasabi or ang daming lines and lahat ina-explain mo sa audience dito naman sobrang baliktad hindi ako nagsasalita <laughs> so it was such a good creative release for me and I'm very thankful that I was chosen to do this movie um, because I feel like um, we need more of these kinds of films also um, parang I, I feel like when, when we release movies now, especially in the mainstream, I always read comments or I always hear the the comment na parang it's all the same or parang it's such a formula film. Well, this movie is it went against all the formulas, so um, it's a first time for me to do something like this with no. Um, Siempre iba yung meron kang kaexena na parang love story or meron kang ka love theme like you feel safe because may may sumasalo. Here, I had to rely and trust completely on the Manyanita team because I had to do most of the scenes alone. So, sila, sila yung ka-eksena ko, pero behind the scenes sila. So, it, it was such a refreshing experience for me. Um, also, the preparations beforehand, um, Shepard, we, uh, we had to fit for prosthetics, we had to change my look, um, we had a series of script readings, of, uh, we even did rehearsals. <laughs> We did rehearsals. That's the first time for me. I've never um, shot a movie where I had to rehearse scenes first, and I like that. Because at least when the thing was set, you already know what their expectations are from you. So it's it's a new experience for me, and I, I loved every part of it. What did you change in look? Um, physically, as you saw from the trailer, my prosthetics are on the left side of my face. Um, I also had to look the part of a sniper shooter na babad sa araw, maghapon. So we tried to achieve that look as much as possible and I feel like we pulled it off. May mga moment ako sa tent na pag napapatingin ako sa salamin, parang nagugulat ako may ibang tao sa tent, pero ako rin pala. So yun, <laughs> pag 4 a.m. yung call time, medyo nasasyak ako may ibang tao sa tent, pero ako rin pala yun. So yun, <laughs> yun po. Direct why the title Manyanita? Well, Manyanita is... Uh, as you know, the actual definition is to, to serenade, right? uh, I think, uh, especially in Mindanao, uh, I also have, uh, uh, coming from Shargao, no, I, have a, I have a resort there. At 12 midnight, there's always a mananita for the birthday celebration. Uh, so, um, 
when you watch the film, I don't want to give it away, right? But it's, and again, it's musically driven. The film has a lot of music. Soundtrack from yeah, Sin, Freddy Aguilar, Joey Ayala, a lot of OPM, original Filipino music, that when you listen to the lyrics, it's also talking and speaking to you. That's why if you notice, I also subtitled the, the music, because I want you to read the lyrics and actually watch the film. But you'll realize at the end of the film why we call it Manyanita, besides it being a film about music, about uh, the lyrics of the songs. So I guess, Manyanita, December 4, it will be showing in the Philippines on December 4, after uh, Tokyo. Yes, Manay. Uh, many, many years 